start on, on your own and do that. So at this point, are there any questions? Please raise your hand before we go on. Okay, no questions. Good. So we're going to start out with a uh, with a brand new Zero account. I set this up. Uh, Zero gives you a 30-day free trial, and uh, I set this up for us for today. This is what the second screen you're going to see. The first screen you get basically just wants the name of your organization, which I put in there as Webinar May 17, 2017. That's the name of this company. And it asks you one very important question, and that is, where do you pay taxes? What country? And that is a critical question because that will set your base currency. And you may uh, use a number of different currencies in zero. Uh, and it's all very neat and it works great. But you can never change your base currency that you start with once you get started with it. Uh, zero just won't let you do it. So it's very important that you pick the right country. And if you are doing business, you're in Great Britain, but you're doing business with the Eurozone, uh, you've got to decide, am I, do I want my base currency to be uh, euros or pounds? And then put it in the proper country. Okay, so the first thing you're going to get, this is exactly what you get once you click on there. And uh, you just click on Next. And we're going to go to Organization Settings. And um, here's the name, our name here. I set it up as a... Uh, the default is already a corporation. I left it in there. Uh, I'm not going to put in all the contact details. You'd only need those if you're going to do invoicing. That's the only thing it's good for. Uh, we're not going to get in there. And the same thing with all your social links, etc. So then you go to the next, and you'll see that you up, you'll be up and running in five minutes if you just uh, leave out all the nonsense. Okay. So here we go. Financial sales tax. Now your tax basis. Let's go with cash. If you don't know, talk to your accountant. Your tax ID number, you do not need at this time. Uh, for everything, I just go with tax exclusive and no tax. I noticed during this zero video a little while ago, they talked about setting up the uh, percentage for each account, and, and that's not necessary. You don't need to worry about that. It just confuses things. So here you have a time zone. This is the default U.S. Pacific. You can change that to wherever you are. Then you go next. The next thing that you that comes up with is your um, uh, invoice settings. And invoices, uh, I don't know if you can see through this uh, transparency thing here, but you have all kinds of things. You can show your tax number, column headings, tax, all these things, and you can get very, very uh, precise and customize them to death. And if we have time at the end, I'll show you a quick little video on how to do all of those things. Uh, if, but for this, at this point, we're not going to go into that. Not everybody has invoices that they want to build their customers or clients with. So we'll skip that. And the next is we're going to invite users. Okay. Uh, very quickly, I'll take you to this screen. This is important. This is uh, the people that are going to be able to use your Zero account. You don't have to pay any more whether you have 100 or one person using it. You normally want to be standard, unless you're an accountant or you feel pretty comfortable and you want to be an advisor. Advisor is somebody that can change anything at will. And um, if you're, you're a business, normal, regular business person, you may not want to be an advisor, but you want to give your, your accountant that role or your bookkeeper, if it's a sophisticated bookkeeper that you have. Uh, you can have a read-only access for somebody that you just want them to see the data, but you don't want them to, to change anything. And you can have some uh, data entry people and you give them specific duties. Now, one of the things that's really important, whereas you may not be an advisor, you may be a standard, you want to be the one that manages users. You want to be the only one that does that. You want to be, if you have payroll, you want to be the only one that's going to do the payroll administration unless you want to give it to your advisor as well. And finally, uh, contact bank account administration, you definitely don't want to give that to anybody else. So all you do is you... Uh, you put the name of the person that you want to add, you know, uh, I'll do one real quick here, John uh, Smith, and then you put the email address here, 
and then uh, that would be safe for your account. And then you click here, advisor, and then you just say continue, and it gives you a screen where you send an invitation. That person gets an email, they click on the email, they're into your account. It's that simple. Okay, the next thing we're going to set up is currencies. Uh, we um, we can add as many currencies as we want, okay? And you have the option to lock in a currency. If you're working with a currency that doesn't fluctuate very much at all, the number of countries like that, you can lock in the currency for as long as a year, so you don't have to mess around with a little gain of a uh, half a penny here, or whatever. Uh, if not, you can let it float, and it reads the currency currency markets every 30 minutes online directly and it calculates your gains and losses automatically very quickly. Next we're going to go to tax rates and we're not going to uh, do anything with that at this point nor should you. When you first set this up you can set up as many tax rates as you want or as many things as you want so we're going to leave them all, all at zero percent. Next, we go to our chart of accounts. Okay, we talked about the chart of accounts. Chart of accounts is a list, an index, if you would, of the book that has all of your accounts in it, which is called the general ledger. So, now, we can import a file, and I'm going to do this just to show you. Uh, we talked about a CSV file before. Or you can use the default chart of accounts. In this case, Zero gives you the same one, either online already or as an import, but uh, I will show you very quickly what the default would be. So you would go and get a template here for from zero, and it opens in Excel, and it's it's an Excel file. Now, as you can see, I have a problem with my mouse here. There we go. There we go. Uh, here's account name the code, the type of account it is. Uh, it's, it goes a little bit beyond just assets and, and, and liabilities. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about that later, but that's kind of important. The tax code, just make them all tax exempt. Description, that's uh, a very uh, lengthy thing where they go into what each account is used for. If you want the account to be on the dashboard, if you want it to be part of expense reports, expense claims, uh, and enabling payments, we won't get into that right now. And if you want to put in the balance, we do not want to put in the balance. Um, if you want to bring in the balance, because you're using a professional, as we discussed before, to help you with this in, in those accounts, then uh, this would be the method to go. Use your use this template. You can change any line you want. If you don't want, uh, for example, you decide you don't have any uh, employee tax payables, just delete that line. You save that file, and again, it's a CSV file, not an XLS file, and you, uh, you then come over here, you browse, you pick it up, you click the import, and you're there. Okay, but we're not going to do that to save time. We're going to go back and decide to use the default chart of accounts, which is identical, and uh, you'll see that you'll have your chart of accounts. And there it is. And there's the numbers, the names, and what they are. Okay? Um, the, um, The final step in getting your zero set up is to um, is do the account balances. And we talked about this a little bit before. So uh, and we're not going to add any bank accounts at this point. Okay, so here's, remember that magic date we talked about earlier, the setting a date? Okay, this is the date that you intend to begin processing of your transactions at zero. It's the easiest when you set your conversion date to the very uh, start of a sales tax period. Well, we talked about that, January 1st being the, the optimal. Okay, now, 
if you do this, okay, like May 2017, it'll give you the default date for today, okay, uh, you will not be able to put anything in from before. So what I, and this is really crucial, what I tell people is go to January of 2010 or somewhere in the way back. That way you have complete flexibility as to what you're going to bring or not bring and you can lock out dates later. And I'll explain what that is later uh, if you want. So uh, see what happens here. In the next step you will be asked to provide account balances of 31 December 2009. If we left it in May, we would have asked for account balances as of April 30th, 2017. So we're not going to do that. So we'll, we'll click next. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's the real pitfall that you have. Now here you can input your account balances if you want it one at a time. Okay? And then we can lock balances. This is what I was talking about earlier. Nobody can enter accidentally transactions before that date. And you can go back later and change that date as you would every year anyway. You lock out the last year so that people don't get in there. So we're going to just go ahead and continue without entering balances because we said we weren't going to uh, enter balances at this time. Okay, you're done. You can start working at this point. Your zero is all set up. That took uh, probably 10 minutes at the most. And here's the first thing that pops up. It's your dashboard. Uh, here are all your bank balances. You have a bank account. We didn't set any up. Here's where you can go for your, uh, uh, for your bank accounts again. Sales, purchases, uh, checks if you want, inventory if you use it, expense claims if you use it, fixed assets if you use it. Payroll if you have payroll. Reports, this is for your accountant, the advisor. Your contacts, this is for your customers, your suppliers, anybody you want to put in there. You can import those too, by the way. And then you have settings. In actuality, you're going, to, you're going to come into the dashboard, and the only places where you're normally going to go is accounts, reports, and sometimes settings, and sometimes contacts, because the contacts get added as you, as you bring in transactions automatically. Okay, so let's go back now to our presentation. Now, um, all settings can be changed at any time except the currency. We talked about that. And remember, that's your base currency, and that gets set up by your country. So, are there any questions at this time? Please raise your hand. Okay, no hands raised. So, we'll continue on. Um, we talked about a chart of accounts. And... Uh, this is a good time to have set it up. If you had your own, you could have imported your own. We went ahead and showed you what Zero has already. Um, I'm a big fan of three-digit charts. Sometimes people go to four, five, six uh, numbers. Uh, I find that if you have more than 80 accounts, you've probably got too many. Uh, and with three digits, you get 999. I think a lot of times you run into situations where somebody wants to get specific detail on things like uh, travel. So travel for salesman Jones, and then they got travel for salesman Smith, and so on and so forth. And they'll have 20 accounts for 20 different salespeople. And worse than that, as these people leave, they'll set up new accounts, and the old accounts stay there because you have transactions. So pretty soon you got 40, 50 accounts for salespeople, and that just clutters up your books. It costs you money because your accountant is having to you know, travel through all that. Uh, and it, it is very inefficient. So uh, if you have, if you want that kind of detail, you need to do something outside your chart of accounts. There are other ways in the software. We won't go into it today, but you can set it up by projects, by territories, by anything you want, and you don't have to make it part of your chart of accounts. Okay? So this is a good time to clean up, delete your uh, accounts you're not using, etc. If you don't want to use the build, in, build uh, uh, if you want to uh, use the built-in chart, which we did. It's a good starting point. You can customize it before you import the template, or you can change it online. Uh, uh, you have to be careful of the account type when it's an asset or liability. And the main ring, the thing to remember is uh, that it's going to determine where that number, the balance in that account shows up. If it's an asset or a liability or an equity account, it's going to show up on your balance sheet. 
regardless of what you call it or what you number it. If it's a revenue or expense account, it's going to show up on your income statement. Okay, so we talked about input starting balances before. Uh, let's now go and add some accounts and delete some accounts very quickly to show you how simple that is. Okay, so let's go to settings. We've got a chart of accounts. And let us say we don't want, we want to change office equipment and add computer. So we call it office and computer, computer equipment, and then you just save it. Okay. Uh, let's say you want to add an account for, um, ooh, let's say an expense account. Let's look for a number that's available. Uh, let's say 665. It's not there. So we add an account. And all you do is click here. And the first thing is account type. Here's your account types, income, revenue, sales. This will be an expense account. Uh, so it was going to 665. And I was going to call this uh, uh, shop expenses. That's all you need. Uh, you can worry about putting it on the dashboard. You can put it in expense claims, enable payments, but you know, at the beginning, you need to worry about any of those things. Those are refinements that you work out later. So now, if you look here now, you'll have your 665 right in here, right below um, 664, shop expenses, and there it is. Okay, now, uh, so we changed one, we added one, let's delete one, let's say you don't want to have that debt 690, so, uh, oops, 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 I didn't do that, 690, we just click on that, we go to the top here, and we delete it, and 690, now, this is important, if the account has ever had transactions in its life with zero, whether it was three, four, five, six years ago, whatever you have in the system. It will not let you delete it, but it will get out of your way. It will say, okay, I am going to archive that account. And what that means is you won't see it in any current period reports or anything. If you ever go back to five years ago or whenever that account had transactions, it will show up as, if it, as though it had been there all along. And if you have a comparison statement where you're comparing this year to several years back, it will go ahead and... Uh, show it at that point, but in this case there are no transactions in it, and so it's going to be deleted. That's how easily you can uh, manage your chart of accounts in zero. Okay, uh, you can isolate, identify, and isolate uh, on new system accounts. There are some systems accounts. I should probably show you very quickly. Uh, they have things uh, like uh, here's your tracking transfers. You cannot get rid of that, so you can't click on there and delete. All right, what I normally do with these is I change the number to a very high number, so it shows up at the bottom, and I change it to expense, because they don't show up on the, uh, on the balance sheet or anything. So I'll change that to 999, and then I'll say in here, system account, do not use. And there are a few of those, and you just go ahead and uh, and put them at the end, and then you have, what you've done is you got rid of all this junk. See, there's 999, tracking transfer system account. Okay? Now, um, the, uh, the number of accounts we discussed, uh, the import template, we, we, we saw it in zero, we reviewed it chart. Okay, now we're going to add bank accounts to your chart of accounts, okay? So we go back up to the top here, and we had add account, well, we're going to add a bank account. And uh, you have to know the bank name exactly right. For example, I will use a uh, very common bank in America, Bank of America. And it will bring up some credit cards that they have, as well as other bank accounts. So you want to make sure you use the right bank, otherwise you'll never find your account. Remember, the object here is to tie it with a 
uh, bank fee. So we're going to call this account name. This is like setting up a chart of accounts. It'll be cash in bank, bank of America. And the account code, let's say it's uh, 101. And the account number, let's just say it's that's your account number at the bank. And it's in U.S. dollars or whatever currency you like. It's Bank of America. It's dictating to you what it is. That's why you didn't have any choices there. Okay. Uh, now, this gets neat. This is where you activate a bank feed. Remember, a bank feed is where your bank talks to zero directly, and you bring in your transactions. So your online ID will be your online ID for your Bank of America account. Okay, and your passcode at Bank of America, and then you click on the agreement, you go next, which is not going to let us go because we're not using a real account. Now, the next thing that ha happens is you will see that the bank not only shows up in your chart of accounts, but it will also show up on your dashboard. Uh, what happened to our bank account? Hey, oh, sorry, I have to refresh. I went back. Okay, bank account should be at the top there. Um, and there it is, 101 Cash and Bank of America. Now, if we go to our dashboard, and again, the dashboard is what you'll see every time you sign on to zero. Okay, and there's your cash in Bank of America. And you can still get a bank feed at a later date if you want to. Or you can manually import a statement. Now, again, this is what we were talking about, importing a CSV file. Now, bank accounts have other files. There's your CSV down here. Okay, now, if your bank has one of these, and it may or may not, okay. And by the way, not all banks have bank feeds. They're not all up to date. Uh, but so if you have like a, one of these, these are, I won't go into detail because of time, but they're very quick to, uh, uh, it, it gets the stuff in there without having to go through any uh, template maneuvers or anything like that. If not, you click here, you get a CSV, you import it, just like your chart of accounts, and now you got your, uh, your transactions, and you do that every so often, and you get it. Now, as far as entering transactions from zero, the simplest ways to do that is here's a little menu for that particular account. You got spend money, receive money. If you spend money, which we all do, okay, you will have somebody that uh, that you do business with, ABC company, okay. This here is critical. I see more mistakes from this, and it takes a lot of time to correct. Uh, it's a simple process, but you don't find it right away. Uh, it defaults to today's date. This may not be when this transaction took place. Okay, so make sure you go there and you get the right month on your date. The reference is, uh, let's say we bought for ABC company, we bought lumber. Uh, and you can put it down here again. Okay, you don't need an item. That would be like if you if you if lumber has a particular number in your inventory, you would add that. Uh, and then this is something that zero does. It's kind of annoying. Okay, I should just like to put two hundred here on my total USD in this case dollars. Uh, but zero forces you to do a quantity and a unit price. Uh, everything in zero has to have a quantity and a unit price. Usually the quantity is one, but then you come along and you have to put your unit price is 200. Uh, so for an account, let's say you want to count, uh, let's, let's type it in, which you would as a business person normally as opposed to whatever. Let's say it's supplies of some sort. Uh, don't have a supplies account, so let's say it's uh, uh, cost of goods sold, 500. There it is. And now uh, that transaction is in your bank. Now, uh, if we want to look now at, um, uh, no, I must have had a default on save by check, pay by check here. Yeah, we did. Didn't want that. Okay. 
so we save that transaction. Now, if you go to your dashboard, you're going to find that your bank balance is minus 200, right? Um, so let's go to the dashboard again. That's where you go when you first come in. And you can customize this dashboard. There you go. Your bank account in zero is $200 short. Now, you can, you can, uh, you can list, you, you can edit your dashboard down here. You edit the dashboard, and then you tell it you want what accounts you want in there. You can omit things. Uh, you can have your receivables, your payables in there. All right, let's go pay some bills. And you can get at it from this menu. Receive, excuse me, let's receive some money. Uh, we just spent some money. Or you can get at it from going to accounts, go to bank accounts, and you'll end up in the same place. <laughs> okay. So uh, this is a Bank of America account, manage account, and you go receive money. And this screen is almost identical. Okay. Um, and this is for the, uh, let's say, CBS company. And again, the date is critical. The reference uh, is uh, invoice uh, 2020. Uh, now, the, uh, and you don't have time to talk about the difference between reference and description. Just in doubt, use it in both places, and it will show up on some shows up in some reports, some in others. But as you can see, it's the same identical, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, screen. Now, if you had set up that invoice for something you sold to CBS company, we would be doing something a little bit different. We would be setting it up as an account receivable. So our unit price here was 300 and this was sales, let's say. It's a cash sale, so we didn't set it up as a regular invoice. And your tax could be on there if you built it in. Remember, we didn't put any taxes in. And you could say that. Now, our bank balance should have gone up to 100 positive. So we will now go to the dashboard and take a look at our bank balance. And it should be $100. Um, now, at this point, there's your $100. Let's look at some reports real quick. Because in the interest of time, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit. So let's take a look at your balance sheet. <coughs> Excuse me. You should only have one account, which is $100. And it should have retained earnings of $100. So you can do all sorts of uh, things you can, you can uh, pick here. Uh, and there even actually is a new report, it's the pop-up just told you, where you can pick all sorts of different options. I'm not going to pick any options. I'm just going to go to May 2017 right now. And that's right there, and then it, it, it has a, it defaulted to last year's. So there's your hundred dollars in the cash in the bank, and there's your current year earnings of a hundred. The three hundred we sold, and two hundred we spent. Now, if we want to see the income statement, we should have a profit of a hundred as well. And again, I'm not changing the month. Um, there's your Sales of 300, gross profit, uh, cost of goods sold 200, net income 100, and you can you can do all sorts of things. You can change the format. Uh, you can publish this and lock it uh, for uh, so that that you have one as of right now. And if it's changed later, you have it uh, for publishing or just for the sake of saying, hey, at this time, this is what the number said. Okay, so. Uh, we worked on getting the bank feeds. Be very careful in the starting date on the bank feed. Remember, you don't want to draw in transactions prior to your starting date. Uh, reconcile and create bank rules. This is a video from Zero. Let's take a quick look at this, and then we'll open it up for questions. Now, the reconciliation process, I should say, is, is not the same as it would be uh, a normal reconciliation process. But we'll talk about that after this. The Abacus desktop accounting software reconciling is a slow, painful task. 
zero connects straight to your bank, so transactions flow in automatically. Instead of putting it off until month end or tax season, start every day by checking the bank at zero, and in a few taps, update the accounts. Once you've connected zero to your bank, get started by selecting reconcile. Zero remembers the last time you categorized a transaction, and will suggest the same details again. You can check. Okay, I'm going to stop here a moment and show you something. The left side here says review your bank statement lines. This is what the bank fee brought us, okay? And then it's here says then match your transactions. What it's going to do is going to look for transactions you already have on the books. So for example, if you had your bank fee set up, remember that $300 and the $200 transactions that we made, okay? They would show up here at some point in time. And if you liked it, then you say, yep, my bank got it right, and you hit OK. Now, Xero uh, looks for things on the books that, are, uh, that, are, that look like the bank feed item. And if it doesn't find them, you get a blank uh, box like this. OK? So. Whatever you need to. But if it's correct, go straight to OK. It's also easy to do this from scratch. Put in a name, select the right account, add a description, and OK. To speed things up, use bank rules. For example, click Create Rule on one of these parking transactions. Then set the conditions so the bank rule takes effect when you want it to. Now all parking expenses coming through are automatically completed and ready for you to confirm. For bank transfers, go to the Transfer tab and select the other bank account involved. If you're ever unsure what to do, leave a comment for your accountant or bookkeeper on the Discuss tab. They'll see you left a comment for them the next time they log into Zero. This one is a check payment recorded in Zero a few days ago and has since been cashed. Zero looks at the reference and amount to make the match. Here's a receipt from a customer that's paying off multiple invoices. Go to Find and Match. Search for the customer or by invoice. Select the invoices that are getting paid. Use the split link for when you need to apply a partial payment to an invoice. Once the receipt is fully allocated to the invoices, click OK. Meanwhile, your accountant has logged in and completed the one you left your comment on earlier. And that's it. You're done for the day. It really is that easy to keep your transactions up to date in zero. Okay. So that video spoke a little bit about um, bank rules. So I'm going to show you a quick one on bank rules because they really make your life easy. You can have a very active bank account if you set up the right bank rules. Uh, it will it'll go so quickly. Those OK boxes just pop right out. At this point, I'd like to ask if there are any questions. Please raise your hand and we'll talk to you individually. OK. We have a question from uh, Naomi Cunningham. Go ahead, Naomi. <laughs> Oh, hi. Um, my uh, accountant has already set up my zero, and I'm concerned, I, I, um, so my tax return was done from, for the last tax return period, uh, and I, I joined zero, um, and it's sort of connected from December 2016, so there's those few months that um, I haven't, you know, haven't got accounted for on zero. I'm concerned that if I, if I, um, transfer the CSV files in, will I, will I mess things up? Well, the, the thing is that, that you want to have a, a clean cutoff. If, if, you, if you've already got some transactions in zero, and then you bring in some transactions from the other system, and they happen to coincide for the same date, so to speak, you're going to have a problem. But if you have not put anything in zero for those dates, then you're okay. Uh, it's 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 if they can, if your accountant can guide you, you're a little bit better off. The okay. key, by the way, there's nothing you can do to zero that's going to mess it up permanently. Uh, yeah. You can always, as an advisor, you can go back and just uh, undo any transaction that's in there. But it does take time to do that. Yeah. So um, I I I'm not sure I answered your question. Did I? No, uh, not entirely. I think I need to, to speak to my to my uh, bookkeeper and accountant and um, yeah. get them to guide me. Yeah, I, I think that, yeah, if, if you're not sure, because what's going to happen is you're either going to have a gap in transactions or you're going to double up, and, and, and that's not yeah. good. Yeah, you know. okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other questions? 
Okay. All right. So we're going to talk about uh, bank rules now very quickly. So I'll show you a video because they do a better job than I do. Are really good, but um, for them to work, you have to be very careful what you put in the. Uh, if, if you restrict yourself to exact matches, uh, you may have a problem. Your bank may put in things differently each time, and they won't always come out the same. Uh, just one letter could cause it to be a problem. Okay, any questions from bank rules? Please raise your hand. Okay, I saw a hand here. Uh, is that Naomi? Is that you, or is that from before? Okay, it's from before. All right. Okay, so no questions. We'll get on. The um, Entering the bank and credit card transactions, we already spoke about. We went through entering a couple of transactions. Remember the 200 and the 300. Uh, the date is critical. It's easy to default it today. I showed you that. The quantity and unit price, everything is a one times the amount. And you can ignore an item, tax, etc. Receive money. If needed, you can transfer money for an account that's in zero. If the account is not in zero, transferring money is just going to mess you up. Uh, there are three ways to record payments in Zero. You can spend money the way we did, or you can go through purchases, which records the debt, the bill that you get from the vendor, and that can be paid subsequently. And when you pay it subsequently, just make sure you do not use spend money when you pay it, or you you have to bring up the invoice and you pay it at the bottom. So there's also expense claims. These are like for expense reports. Or salespeople or whoever you have out there that, that may incur some ex reimbursable expenses. I do not recommend that you use them at first. They're not the easiest to work with. 
Uh, there's also a file attachment feature to everything you do in Xero. Uh, let's go back to, uh, for example, the transactions that we had that we made a little bit ago. Uh, I should have shown you at that time, but we'll do it now real quick. So we had, uh, those transactions are now in there. And there's that lumber transaction. Now it says unreconciled, it'll say unreconciled until we get something from the bank feed, or we manually say, hey, reconcile this. Okay, so I go to this transaction, and this is the same with every screen, just about you get in zero, anything you have. You go here, click on that, and you can upload anything you like. You can upload a paper uh, scan uh, of the invoice itself or any backup that you may want, a spreadsheet to go with it. You can upload as many things as you want or attach them to a document. Okay? So that makes it nice. Now I'm going to show you real quickly, we're running out of time, uh, how you can record purchases uh, for subsequent payment. You just go here again to accounts, go to purchases. All right. And you're going to go to well, let's show you the whole screen. This has draft, awaiting approval, awaiting payment, and overdue. And you can just click on new. And the screen is like almost identical to what you saw before for spend money. Here's your from, your date, except you have a due date here, reference, description, quantity, unit, account number. Okay? And you can either save it, which turns it into a draft, and later on come back and finalize it, or if there's another, if you have a, a data entry person doing this, they can save it, and then you come along and you approve it. Once it's approved, remember I said here, do not use spend money to pay it. You bring up the invoice and pay at the bottom, okay? So uh, once it's approved, you will see, or maybe I'll show you very quickly here, uh, CBS should be it. Uh, from CBS, there it is. Okay, due date, it needs one, so let's make it the same uh, description, just anything. No reference, 100, account, uh, let's call it uh, cost of goods sold, and quantity, got to have that quantity. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and approve this, and then you'll see that you'll now have a bill to pay for 100. There we go. There's the bill. Okay. Now, now that once it's there, see what we get at the bottom here? Add payment. So I can put the amount paid, whether it's a partial payment or not, the date paid, the account that it was paid from. Here's our cash and bank, Bank of America account. Okay. And any kind of a reference you want to say. And then you add the payment. And there you go. Now, if you go back to your bills, you get the uh, uh, you get the fact that this is a this is sitting there awaiting payment, and if you go to all, you will see the total of 100 sitting there for you. The same exact thing with your sales, except it's the reverse. Unfortunately, we're not going to have time today to uh, customize those invoices. There's an excellent uh, video on that, but see, it's the same thing. Zero makes it very simple. You can put your sales here. Uh, as you saw in the video earlier, you can shoot your uh, invoices to your customer, and they can pay it online. And uh, but it's the same exact format, so it's very, very simple. You approve it, and uh, and it also you can go back here to invoices, and you can send reminders. You can send uh, uh, statements, either uh, PDFs, which you can print as hard copy, or you can. Uh, actually uh, uh, send them via email. So, I was going to get you to creating invoices online. Uh, it's a quick zero video, uh, customizing, and you can add your bank details. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Uh, on the financial statements, there's an awful lot of uh, flexibility that you have. Uh, as you can see here, all the different things that you can uh, uh, do uh, to get you exactly what you want. You can customize them to a pretty good degree. Um, accounts receivable and accounts 
payable aging. Again, you have uh, many options to choose from. Uh, and um, importing transactions. And um, Sydney, do I have two minutes to do this one? This one's kind of important. Sydney, are you with me? Yep, I'm with you. Okay, do we have two minutes to do this one? Yep, you can. Yep, go ahead. Okay, because that's important. We didn't get to the others, but I think this is this is a uh, on importing transactions. Yep, Thank you. Cool. When you're starting out with zero, there may be information from your old system that you need to bring across, so you're able to carry on with your day-to-day -day processing and for your accounts to be set up correctly. When you click Import in Zero, you'll be provided with a template that you can copy your data into and import, saving you from having to enter it in all manually. When setting up a typical checklist of what you want to import would be your chart of accounts, contacts, outstanding invoices, bills, and any unallocated credit notes normally in that order. You can even import your fixed assets and inventory items. In the relevant screen, you'll see the option to import, and you'll be provided with instructions and the template you'll need to use. The templates are in the CSV file format. What's a CSV file? It's a type of file you can easily open and work with in Excel to format your data into the correct column headers that Zero provides. So when you import it, Zero will understand your data and pull it into the right place. Maybe you've downloaded your data from your old system into a spreadsheet, so you can copy this into the Zero template and reorganize it all so it sits correctly under the relevant column headers. However, don't change any of the headers themselves. That's what Zero uses to understand what the data is and where it needs to go. The import won't be allowed if you start changing those around. Once you're ready, save it somewhere easy to find as a CSV file. You may get a few prompts and just click through these in a fashion that will save the file as a CSV and not an Excel spreadsheet. Now, back in Zero, we browse, select the file, then import. It's really that simple. Now, depending on what you're importing, you may still have to approve or confirm the import. And things like invoices and bills will be imported in a draft state so you can review them first before approving them, giving you the opportunity to delete them and try again if you got it wrong. We have a range of videos on importing as well as comprehensive help articles to help you through the final parts. Okay, that brings us to our conclusion. Uh, we'll uh, see if there are any questions out there. Please raise your hand and uh, we will answer at this point. Not seeing any hands. Going once, going twice. Okay, want to thank you for being with us today. And that brings us to the end of our uh, webinar on zero. Thanks, Ed. Um, yeah, I just want to say to everyone, like I said at the beginning, that um, this webinar was recorded. Um, and we will send you all an email with a link in the next 48 hours for you to catch up or watch whenever you want. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed and we'll see you next week.